<sighs> Good day, everyone, and welcome to Car Stereo Talk. I am your host, as always, Dean. Sitting to my right, Fernando. my good friend Fernando and cohort in this mess that we've created. Yep, it seemed like a good idea and we keep doing it, so I guess it is. Welcome to the show, guys. Tonight, well, it's Monday, so we got a Monday show for you. And yes, in case you're wondering, that is a candle and that is a Mickey. It's a fire. Um, we got fire going to, to ward off any evil spirits, also known as bugs, gnats. It happens. Okay, anyways, welcome to the show, guys. Tonight, well, we have a lot of things to talk about, as always, and I'll just start with this. If you have questions, make sure to get them in the comments. But before we dig in too much, hope everyone is doing well today. Thank you. Today, Thank today you so is much. today is going okay. It's it's an all right Monday mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, evening, gents. Good evening, Dean and Fernando from California, where the weather apparently is doing much better. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Do a great job. We will try our best. Uh, Fresno checking in. What's up, Frank? Uh, I'll be listening to the show, driving to work. Totally understand. Um, good evening. Have you guys had a chance to play with the Recoil MST-1 yet? What he's referring to. Right here. I have one. You got one? I'm okay. quicker. I got one right here. No, 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 but mine is oh, already on my toolbox. Mine was upside down. It comes in this cool box. His is already in his toolbox. Wow, you already put yours in the toolbox? Yeah. As we was talking to. Uh, I'm sure if you're interested in the piece, we'll get Marty Dean. We'll probably pop in at some point. And if he doesn't, that's where you get it from. He'll send me <laughs> and there's, he'll give us his email address. Um, as far as if we had a chance to play with it, uh, not a lot. So we're still in the discovery phase. Not even phase. deep into it, but yeah, we open it. Um, and we uh... Really what we should probably do. What is this? Uh, that didn't came with that's, my, uh, I don't know what that is. That's like a power wire or something. Somehow it got... <laughs> that, that came in you. <laughs> no, I, I, when I cleaned them all up, I probably just saw the bag and threw it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Oh he, no, he sent it to you. No, he didn't. Did he? Oh, yes. How did we miss that? I, Cause I was in that box. We opened my box. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. But this is his, uh, this is the recoil wire distribution box. Yeah. That is so funny. All right, well, I'm going to put it back in Check my box. Check your box, hey, guys. Check your box. Check your bo uh, anyways, if you got... Sorry, my box. He's got a dentist appointment on Wednesday. They're ripping out his his, his things. Wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth got to come out. I know. Old guy getting his wisdom teeth pulled out. Anyways, uh, if you guys want us to do a more in-depth review on that, I'm sure we can squeeze it in here. Uh, I don't know if we'll do... So I know there's somebody that wants to do, like, a full test on it and put it up against, like... I think more or less just talking about the features and what they can do for you to probably be a better move. But anyways, good evening. What's up? From North Carolina. We get flooded in some areas right now due to this tropical depression. <laughs> that sucks. So sorry. Fang, so nice of you to be here. Very Keeper nice. of the Thank time. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll we'll get to we'll get Fang on board here to, to keep us in line as always. Uh, hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, York, PA, checking in. What's up? Twin Cities, checking in. What's up? Timmy D, yo, yo, yo. Howdy, mm -hmm. y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, hello from Vegas. It's only 80. Yeah, we had the door open today. I mean, it was fantastic. Today was beautiful. It was good. It was what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. It's just uh, first time on the live. Well, welcome. We Thank hope, you. We Thank hope you, you for watching. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Buenos Tardes, Caballeros. There you go. You got oh, it. Oh, it's Ricardo in there with him. Mm -hmm. I've seen that every year. Yeah, I, know. I know, I know. Uh, everything plugged in. Uh, not unlike Saturday's show, I watched the replay. I don't remember what happened on Saturday's show. I think like everything started cutting off. Remember? No. And that was like a software thing. No, I, I just ignore everything that goes yeah, wrong. Probably. Yeah, I don't even think about it. Um, that was a fire. Five minutes to five star. Very nice. Thank you, it Bobby. What's up, good. Bobby? How's everybody doing? Good evening from the Jersey Shore. Yeah. Uh, where do I find the Brian and Dean Car Stereo podcast? Well, you should ask. It's Car Stereo Talk with Dean and Brian. Mm -hmm. You can find it on iTunes as well as Podbean. Uh, or if you follow Brian Mitchell on Facebook, um, he always puts a link up to it. So there, there was no show posted yesterday because Dean forgot to post it. However, there will be a Shame show posted tonight when Dean gets home. So this week's show will go out tonight for those of you that are, are doing it. And yes, Brian and I have a podcast we do. It's a half hour long show. 
we talk about car stereo stuff. Mm -hmm. Apparently, people are enjoying it. Um, so, hi, Eduardo. Uh, I'm just going to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. No, I got you. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now, remember to get your questions in. Start letting them pile in, and we will uh, – Fernando's going to look through there and start getting them. But before we get to that, as always, we need to head over to Facebook where we have the 12-volt. Oh, let me turn off hide current comment. We have the 12-volt clean wire club photo of the day or the week. Yeah. Photo of the week. Mm -hmm. photo, who's the guy this week? Do we know? Do we yes, have of course. Of course. I know. You know? Yes. Uh, his Which name is Cameron. Cameron? Cameron Daverson. Daverson. Sure, camera. Yeah, it's camera. Okay, got some Rockford stuff in there. Got some of the M2s along with the R2s mm -hmm. happening, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, hey, silver and black. I would have flipped them and probably gone like gray, black, gray, but it's probably a reason for that. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, no, it looks good. Got the recoil distribution block. Mm -hmm. For those of you guys that don't know, this segment of the show is brought to you by the fine folks at Kenwood America. That's right, Kenwood Car Audio. If you have not taking a look at the Kenwood stuff. I strongly recommend you head over there and do it. It is my personal favorite radio. Uh, they also make some most amazing speakers and amplifiers at great price points. You can find them at KenwoodUSA.com mm -hmm. or just type in Kenwood Car Stereo is what I like to do uh, because it'll take you right to the Kenwood Car Stereo page. And a lot of people don't know this, but the XR as well as the Exelon all comes with a two-year warranty. Yes. Yeah, so you yes, don't have to do, do anything other than purchase it, and you automatically get a two-year warranty to step up to the higher-end product. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty cool program. But, yes, thank you, Kenwood, for bringing this. And if you guys are not members of the 12 Oak Clean Wire Club, what are you waiting for? Join. Head over. Get engaged. Post your pictures of your amazing wiring. Ask questions and have fun. Mm -hmm. And it is a Facebook group, so don't be surprised. There are some douchebaggeries that go on in there. But, you know, hey, we have a team. Uh comprised of two people that do really well at managing it. Uh, so it's a great place to visit. <sighs> Sometimes go crazy, but go just, crazy, just, go hey, crazy man. for sure. It's a lot of people in there. There is a lot of, it's quite amazing. It totally was not, something. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. I was not expecting that when we decided to do that. And this first segment of the show is brought to you by the fine folks at Focal dash America.com seems to be a, a reoccurring thing. Just put dash America on the end of anything when you're trying to find a dash brand America and, and you will find it. Uh, this segment is brought to you by the plug and play or what they like to call Focal inside. If you've never seen Focal inside, head over to Focal dash America.com and you'll get to this page right here where it says inside, AKA plug and play scroll down. You have the Porsche kit. You have the Tesla kit, the Harley Davidson kit, the Mercedes Benz, the BMW, the Volkswagen, we should get those for your car. Uh, the Toyota kits, the Nissan kits, the Ford kits. And then we have T harnesses as well as small amplifiers. So there is a lot, mm -hmm. a lot to check okay. out. So plus you have all the other Focal speakers that are over there that you might want to check out. Uh, if you've never seen the Slate Fibers, check out the Slate Fibers. It's a value added speaker. Get that premium French speaker, but at a more reasonable price. And yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. What do we got so far, Fernando? You got you got mail? One right here. You got mail. Uh, I asked the other night about a 6 to 8 channel amp with staggered power. Would the Kicker Marine line of multi-channel amplifiers work as well? Not really interested in a, DSP, a DSP right now. Yes. And Okay, so since you've asked that question, my brain has decided to just keep going and going. Uh Kicker does make 6 and 8 channel both in their entry-level marine and their high-end marine. One of the nice things about their higher end, which is built off the KX platform, just a newer version of it, they do give you parametric EQs on four of the channels, so it is designed to do tweeter mid-bass, tweeter mid-bass. Uh, another amplifier line that you may also want to check out is the uh, Sony ES line of amplifiers. They make a 6 and 8 channel as well that are non-DSP amplifiers. So... There again, that added one in there that I didn't, I you know, forgot, totally forgot. So, um, yeah, check those out. But, yes, those, fantastic. All four wisdom teeth. So, funny thing is, is he only has three wisdom teeth. So, he gets a discount. So, <laughs> it's, a, it's a buy three, don't have to do the four, free. Yeah. So, uh, I went there last night to get my Kenwood firmware updates, but nobody was there. Um, yes, and I got the picture of you driving by the store last night. Sorry, bro. Um, it was Sunday. It was Sunday. It was. And, you know, you wanted to get home. Out there fishing all day. 
crazy if he was I, I would have been closed today. I would do if I was him. I would just do Monday to Saturday and close. I I really want to be Monday, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, was, to, Tuesday through Tuesday Saturday, to Saturday. Yes, close Sunday and Monday. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'd like to be in all of this. Because mm-hmm. um, I I mean, and there again, we could switch if we needed to. Mm-hmm. Like if we needed to be open, like. Saturday or, or I don't know one Saturday. I don't know. I will. I don't know. I don't know. I just would like to be closed. To me, those hours make the most sense. The six day yeah, week shit's gotta I think go. So. Yeah. Um. I don't know. We'll see. Good morning from Japan. I Crazy love. cranker. See, I want to go to Japan. I do and I don't. Really? I really do. So we've talked about this. My mm-hmm. problem with travel is I don't want to organize it. Yeah. So like, I would love to go to Japan, but I want to. I, I I have enough. That I have to do in my day to day life of For just sure. everything that needs to be organized in order to run this this company and run yeah. this company. Yeah. I, when I go on vacation, I don't want to do anything. I, right, right, I, right. I, I want to be a backseat guy. But that's what Haley's for. You that, know? And Haley does an amazing job. So just like, I would just Haley, give me a credit card, yes, bro. I she got takes everything. my credit card and she <laughs> she does all of that. So um, yeah. from that respect, yes, uh, Haley would have to play on the Dude, trip. These, these, because I time just, for for California was great, you know. Like yeah. she got every single ride, and like we're gonna go here, we're gonna go there, we're gonna go there after that. that yeah, was yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah well, she's like that. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you need the amp by amp base knob, or will the audio control epicenter base knob be enough? Okay, so it depends on the epicenter that you buy. So, for example, if you buy the epicenter micro, it's the ACR. Four, and if I get those three letters wrong, I apologize, but it's the four. And what makes the four unique is that only for one works at the epicenter micro, and it has two knobs. So the outside knob is for effect, and the inside knob is for subwoofer volume. If you buy the competition series epicenter, which is the older one, trunk mount, it only comes with an effect knob, so you'll need two knobs. And that's why a lot of the times you would see uh, audio control products with two knobs. So you have subwoofer volume and effect volume. So you'd have two knobs right there. So, yeah, and the Epicenter Micro knob will only work with the Epicenter Micro. So that might be a reason to buy it <laughs> because it is more. The competition is still the best value. Mm-hmm. The reason why the Micro is more is because it's high level input as well as RCA. And it has the load resistors built into it that aren't in the competition series. So, yeah, anyways. Okay. Yeah. Live from Flint, Michigan. Don't drink the water. Okay. <laughs> Don't drink the water. What's going Spent on a lot of way? time in Flint. I like Flint. I had a girlfriend that lived in Flint. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, her dad lived in Flint. She lived in Florida, so I went and visited her. We, we both took, we both graduated from high school and we went to Michigan. She flew up to Flint and I drove up with my dad because um, he flew down for my graduations and we drove home. Um, okay. and so then I drove over and saw her at her dad's house. Really weird. Really weird. But anyways, it was a lot of fun. Um, oh, good one. DSP question. How do you tune a DSP without an RTA? I would believe people own more DSPs than RTA. So you'd be surprised. It's actually, there's no reason to not, okay? So you can go out and you can buy a microphone to do acoustical measurements for under a hundred bucks, okay? You have the Dayton uh, Bluetooth USB, I'm sorry, USB mic. Mm-hmm. You have the mini DSP. I got to buy the Dayton. I should buy the Dayton so that I'll have all of them. Yeah. Um, you can buy the, the, the Dayton. You can buy the mini DSP. You can buy the, um, that's a problem with putting those cases all the way up there. Um, you can go out and you can buy, ah, the, Behringer, so you can buy a Behringer portable player or uh, interface. This Euphoria. is Euphoria. Yeah, so this is, and then you can buy the Behringer microphone. These are like this is like 150 bucks, 120 bucks. Uh, that'll plug into a laptop. Oh, probably 150 with the cable. Um, so, and then you can use depending. Now, if you get the USB one, you can use an iPad because you can use one of many iPod apps. Okay, let me move this over. Here, the bugs are yeah, I feel it now. Yeah. So, well. yep. So you you can you can use uh, Android or iPad uh, apps on your that will plug right in using the USB style. You because most of those are USB C. They're under they're around a hundred bucks. So, as far as to answer the question, don't 
But if you if if you don't know what you're listening for, it's not really going to matter, right? You're just going to do a terrible job. Um, so why would you? Especially, I suppose if you had a DSP that allowed you to do global adjustment, mm -hmm. like all just global adjustment, that would probably make the most sense. Like you could you could probably so. There, there's a couple different ways to tune depending on the DSP. So, for example, global adjustment allows you to tune multiple speakers at the same time. So you have a right and a left, like the cheap, uh, the, the Chinese software that like 90% of these things use. They have left and right tune. So you can mm -hmm. do both front speakers at the same time, both rear speakers at the same time, and subwoofer on its own. But if you have like tweeter, mid-range, mid-bass, there's not a global adjustment to adjust all six of those at the same time. Your better DSPs, um, such as your Helix, your Arcs, your Moscones, um, and your Audison, to some regard. Yeah, Audison does too. Uh, you can even do it with a, a, a um, Rockford DSR-1. has a global adjustment to where you can, they call it basic, Rockford does. But you can go in and you can adjust all channels mm -hmm. at the same time or just all the channels that you want to adjust at the same time. I said Helix, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, that makes it a lot easier if you're going to like try to wing it and do it by ear. The problem is, is that you have 32 bands of adjustment. Now, some of them like Audison has like a seven band. The DSR-1 has a seven band that are just like really basic EQs that you could probably do by ear because it's almost like tuning a radio. Um, Moscone has... That's all global. That's that's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Um, you could Arc has a a, a a three band EQ that you could probably get some good results with, but no, I would just buy a microphone. All right. Yeah. Want to jump to this one first? Sure. Twenty twenty one F one. Oh, first off, Frank, thank you for the ten dollars. Twenty twenty one F one fifty with twelve inch sync. Four with BO system, Alpine R series six by nines at six and a half amp pro stinger four channel and sundown 2k a uh, two scar out of 10. It's gonna be a ton of bass. Getting a Kenwood 802.5 recommendations on door and sub for better sound. So the first thing is there's nothing in here about a DSP, okay. So that's going to be your biggest problem. You're getting an 802.5 with no DSP at all. You're taking out a system that is all DSP. Okay. So the BO system, the Bang & Olsen system, is a full DSP system with up mixing and the whole nine yards. So just by taking that out and putting an amplifier in there, you're going to lose all of that control. So if it were me and I was selling you this system, I would not be selling you an 802.5 because even though the price is right, it really doesn't give you the ability to custom the sound, customize the sound the way you want it. Uh, you may want to look into getting something with a DSP in it or an add-on DSP for the 802.5 because the 802.5 is a value proposition for sure. Um, something in the similar price range as that, like we had Chris on last week and the Zapcos have similar price points to this with DSP built in, not as much power, but mm -hmm. still it, it's a great option. Uh, standalone DSP, you could do like an Arc Audio PSM Pro. Uh, it will cost you more than the amplifier, but at the end of the day, it has eight outputs. So yeah. you can grow the system with it. If you ever wanted to add a second 802.5 to put like an 802.5 on just the front doors and the rear, bridge one of them to the front doors, which we've done before. We've actually put two 802.5s and guy had one, says I want more power. So we bridged it to a three channel amplifier, uh, run one of the subs on one amp, the other sub on the other amp. And then we took the other five channel, went one and two on the tweeters, three and four on the rear. And so we had one amp power in the mid base. And, you know, with something like that DSP, you'll be good to go. But you're going to need a DSP. Otherwise, it's just going to make sound. And you have your radio to hope you hit it right in the mark. I've never done that. I don't want to. Uh, I keep hearing DSP. Is this current rage in car audio? Um, so DSP is digital sound processor. It's not necessarily just a car audio thing. Um, home audio's had it. For years, car audio has kind of had it for years. Like if you look back in the 90s, it started out, you could buy a DSP and it had very similar to what home audio had. Because like in home, you had Dolby Pro Logic, you had Dolby Hall, you had Dolby Surround, you had 
then you had the the mixing ones where you could do like live jazz uh bar mm -hmm. you know pop um so dsp incorporates four basic functions the first being an equalizer which is um let's let's, let's mm -hmm. hold on hold that thought for a second because we need to stay on time here or i get in trouble um i'm going to turn this off and you can turn that on mm, um, boom all right, I'll come back to doing this, but this segment is brought to you by, let me finish answering this question. We'll do the ad, yeah, but yeah, I just yeah, need to course. switch the thing. Okay, so comprised of four individual things. First is the equalization. Now, depending on the DSP, you may have up to three EQs. You may have an input EQ for de-equalization, a main EQ for equalizing all speakers individually, because uh, a, a true DSP will have an equalizer for every channel output. So if it's an eight band DSP or an eight channel DSP, you'll have eight channels of equalization. And then you also can have a final or global DSP, which will allow you to do tuning of the whole DSP. That was what we were talking about a minute ago. So EQ, very important. And there again, depending on how much money you put into it, your experience may vary. Next is gonna be level control, meaning the ability to control the level of each output individually. The reason for that is the speaker is closer than that speaker. So you may need to turn this one down in order for it to sound right. And speaking in that, you have what's called time delay or delay, which is to help compensate for the fact that this speaker is closer than that speaker. So you can adjust from your farthest speaker, meaning the mid bass and the driver's door being the farthest speaker away from your head, you can add delay to all the other speakers. So they create a circle of sound or a, a solar system of instead of having multiple chant, multiple arrays of outness, um, oh, the symmetry piece, uh, to delaying <laughs> them all out to the same thing. And then the last thing is crossover, meaning an individual crossover for each channel output so that each speaker can do what they need to do. So a tweeter can play tweeter, mid-range can play meter. This is an example of a early DSP. This is the symmetry controller. Um, Sony ES had Sony ES back in the 90s. Um, uh, Clarion had one that was pretty cool. So yeah, there has yeah, been, uh, Pure S80 had a very basic version of it. That wasn't in the 90s, that was much later. Um, so it has existed for a while, but the, the foundation of what we've established here in 2024, so moving on past them, you might not have been alive in the 90s. Um, what we have now is these are the four functions that you get in a DSP. Uh, so. In a radio, some radios will have what we call basic DSP, meaning they'll have some of these features, but not all of them, uh, like individual de equalization for each channel. Some may have that, some may have global, but your mileage may vary depending on what you're doing. So yeah, there is a lot of neatness to it. So the reason why DSP has become so prevalent is because the manufacturers, the, the OEs, the guys that are building the car, they take advantage of this as well too. So if you buy a car, today or within the last 10 years, probably the last 20 years, uh, there has been some form of signal manipulation done to the output. Uh, there's a thing called dynamic EQ. It's also called loudness, meaning at higher volumes, the, the system will lower certain aspects of the sound so you don't blow their speakers. They don't want to replace those $5 speakers, you know, with some idiot that's over there going, oh, look, man, these things are bracing out. Crack, 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 and, you know, oh, it yeah. blows, and you got to warranty that. So, or the consideration of, you know, this speaker and that speaker, and I don't want it to sound like everything is just coming from the corner of the car. So they put all pass filters in there that will add, it's a really generic way of doing uh, surround, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, when you look at something like a BO, a BO uses up mixer technology, uh, which is what extrapolates a surround sound out of two channel audio, because at the end of the day, uh, music is just two channels. It's not like movies where you have, full surround sound where it's multi layers of channels up, you know, 9.2 can mm -hmm. be crazy. So there's a lot of stuff. And so, you know, when you buy a brand new car and it has this in it, and the first thing you do is slap, you know, a basic amplifier in there. A lot of the stuff just gets lost. Or the worst thing is, is that a new car, the equalizer that is there from the factory is designed to work with the cheap speakers that they put in and optimize the output performance of those. So when you change those, in some cases, you can get a much worse experience. Like you're just like, I just put new speakers in there. It sounds like trash. Well, that's because the new speakers you put in there 
it's not EQ'd for that. It's EQ'd for these cheap pieces of crap to try to get them to sound better. If the speaker you're putting in is efficient in where they had boost or cut, then the, it's going to sound like dirt. So having some form of EQ in there, which we've had in dash EQs for years to do this, uh, will fix that and allow you to take advantage of these things. So there again, there's just kind of a <laughs> brief explanation on that DSP. I was very brief. Bro. Hey, are you interested in a dash cam? Do you want to keep your crazy people from doing stupid stuff? Like, hey, bro, you, you're, you know, uh, boom, you're dead. Uh, if you want to get all that stuff or be like the you know crazy car Russian dudes where you just see ah, all that, you need a dash cam. You need a dash cam to prevent insurance fraud and all these other things. Right now, you can head over to thinkwarestore.com and you can check out three of their high-end dash cams that they offer you, all multi-cameras. Some of them allow you to do up to four cameras. So mm -hmm. You can get left, right, side to side, slip. Oh, sorry. It, yeah, Coolio. Um, yes. May he rest in peace. Uh, so you can check those out. Head over to thinkwarestore.com, as well as we did an unboxing video here that talked about the differences between all three of their most popular cameras. Yeah, check it out. And yep. yes, we will be doing a video soon on how to install one and the three. There's like, oh, you're going to love it. It's going to be fantastic. Thinkwarestore.com. Next question. Thinkwarestore.com. Let's just all be happy that I said it right because. Yes, please. Holy Everybody crap, clap. That's a Rockford Cemetery. I had one. Of, yeah, so luckily. This, okay. Uh, the love for you guys is unstoppable because we had a customer that was flying into Tampa. He's from out of town. He was flying in Tampa for a convention. He had a rental car. He brought this with him on the plane to drive it over here to give it to us so that we could, because he's like, I know you guys will love this. It's been sitting in my attic for like six years. And I was like, oh, hell yes. This is the coolest thing ever. Because I never had one of these. I was a broke ass little kid working at a fast food restaurant. So this was the thing that dreams were made of. So it might be late, but I found, and this is not the whole unit. This is just the controller. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole big rack system that exists for this. And there is still one in use today in Mark Fukuda's Rockford van. So Very 2016 cool. Mustang, seven speaker system, no amp. Okay. What do you recommend for the yummy sound? DSR-1 or something better? So I have to say the DSR-1 is a pretty like cool piece to put in that because it's for one, reasonably priced. Uh, and two, it, it packs a punch full of DSP. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely do that. Now the 2016 with the seven speaker stereo means it probably doesn't have the lower speakers on the bottom of the door. Beats as an eight year old car, you may be able to pick up a set of used door panels that has the lower speaker. You may want to look into doing that because if you can get a set of those lower door panels for, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, might be worth it because then you can do a three-way set. You can put a six inch, a tweet, a mid, and get that, as we call yummy sound, a lot better than you basically have a five by seven in the top of the door, which limits what you can do. Now, there are certain manufacturers like Rockford where they give you a template to put their six and a half inch where a five by seven would go, but then they also make five by seven coax or components. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, did I say Rockford? I meant Alpine. No, Alpine. Did I say Alpine? No, you say Rock. I said Rock. Okay, I meant Alpine. I'm sorry. That was a total slip up there. Alpine, when you buy like a set of R-types, gives you the bracket. Anyways, mm -hmm. it's easy enough to make. But if you want to go all behind there, then you have to do like a five and a quarter and a tweeter. Five and a quarter suck. Suck so bad. At that point, just look for some really <clears throat> nice uh, five by seven coaxels, which is why I said Rockford, because Rockford has the T-series five by seven. It's a T1 five by seven. Mm-hmm fantastic five by seven it's expensive because it's a t1 series but if those are the only four speakers i have in my car those are the ones i want because they're badass um that five by seven is up high enough into the door we're going with a coaxial kind of makes sense um and if you wanted to go crazy you could buy amp them but you'd need a dsp for that but yes the dsr one would be a fantastic piece to put in it now if you wanted to go full crazy get yourself some door panels you could also do a blackbird but it's a 2016, so you may also just want to replace the radio. Like in that car, it's 2016. I'm going with a new radio, uh, and then I'm just going to do like an 802.5 Kenwood. So I do a full Kenwood system. <laughs> put like a 908 in the dash, 802.5. Put those Rockford speakers in the side, some subs in the trunk. Be rocking. Be rocking. Uh, if I wanted to do DSP, I still can. Okay. 
I have a Morel IP Uni 8 inch, yeah, 8 inch two way, but want to add a mid. What Morel mid would I want to add? Mm. Okay, so it depends on how much room you have. Okay, mm -hmm. that's really what comes out. Are you on the, no, you're not on their page. No. All right, so hold on a second. Let me, let me do this. Morel, hi fi.com. All right, so oh, what, the CDM 700? Yeah, sure. Oh, the MM2? Uh, the MM2. That was Christian reply to all that. So. Yeah, the MM2 would be good. Yeah. Um, why is that? Why am I not like. There we go. Hold on. Let's go. Performance. The website, the website is crazy. Does this give me what I want? All products. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. This this is just driving me yeah. crazy. Wow. Well, I mean, in I the end of the day, you have to see Arc, what. Arc Audio is, is their website. is fantastic. A, what space do you have? Temple Ultra. You might have like. So a, they, make, they, make, they make a couple different. Yeah, mid range right. so they make a um yeah i could just walk over and grab both of them because they're both in the cabinet behind me so the mm2 is super thin uh that is a fantastic mid-range um if you just need something small it's built in the carbon nano line so you can uh yeah carbon nano so it's a vertus carbon nano mm2 uh, but they also make a regular c they make two other ones they make a, a dome mid-range it's a little bigger that's the 700 yes that's really nice if you have room for that that's fantastic that's, you know that's also um slim three and a half man i, I can't find anything on this i can't find it on here and then they yeah. also make the little tiny mid-range which is just the just the mid which probably makes the most sense to go with that one mm -hmm. um It is the CCRW254. I don't have the third one because I don't have the third one, but this is probably the one, the CCW250, CC, CCWR254 is probably the one you're going to want to look to go with that. That speaker, it's this little guy right here. It's fantastic. Um, this will probably be, this will blend well with the eight inch for sure. Um, the MM2, this little guy right here, because you have a tweeter. So I think the MM2 is a little bit probably not needed and it's gonna be way more expensive because it's a Virtues car. See how thin it is? In the 700, it comes, I, I don't know. We the have 700. the 700. Do we? I have the 700. Where? Oh, On it's in the three kit. Way. It's in the three yeah. way set. Yes, that's right. It's almost uh, the same as that, it's just a little bit it's bigger. bigger. Yeah, it's and built off of the same idea. I would look at, I think the CCWR254 yeah. would be the better move, uh, especially with that speaker. Um, yeah. Okay. They use very similar magnets. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. All right. Next question. Update on uh, update to the Saturday chat. Well, Charlie. What's that? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Charlie Putt, bass butt, Ross. Did you say Charlie Poof? Poof. Poof. Yeah. Bass. Bass, but Rush. Little bass. Little bass. If I go through it active, will Blackbird Amp have similar? Base the logarithm feature as an epicenter. Oh, I remember this question. So the question was epicenter micro. No, right now, currently, there is no amplifier that has the epicenter micro type features built into it or epicenter feature built into it at all. The, the, you could get away with the competition series if you didn't need the, um, so it's like 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. It solved the issue. Get the epicenter competition, just use the another base knob i would go that way because that would solve all of this and, and be simple and be like cheap uh and give you what you're looking for the epicenter sorry the blackbird has a feature called um super bass but the super bass feature in there is not like an epicenter it actually should be called super mid-range because it's built off of wave which is what makes the little bluetooth speakers sound like 15 inch subwoofers 
And you're like, how does that work? That's one of the features it's built into. It's not wave. It's, it's something else, but it's using a very similar technology because it's an open source to make that work. So one day maybe we'll have the dreams that we all want, but right now, no, um, this web page is killing my computer. So let me shut off this web page. Yes. All the flash that's that one you can shut it out too. Yeah. My computer's um, going, screw you guys. All right, let me turn this off. Right. Uh, yeah, this is what's next. Okay. Yeah. All right, so next question. Yeah. Hey, guys. Awesome, awesome show. show. Can you give me, can you give advice on how to? How to give me my factory radio in a 2021 Silverado Nambos no amplifier trail bus custom amplification. I have the T, the T harness loop connector from Crutchfield. Do you have an answer? Can you guys also, so how to give my factory radio, my factory radio. So I'm confused. Are we going to replace the radio? Or what are we trying to get? Can you give advice on how to give my get my factory radio in a 2020 Silverado Nambos, no amp, trail boss, custom ampl amplification. I have the T-loop harness connector from Crutchfield. Oh, okay. So basically what he's trying to do is add some amplifiers, I'm assuming. Um, 2021 Silverado, Nambos, no amp, trail boss is the, you know, custom amplification. So he wants to add an amplifier to it. Uh, okay. The reality is you have the, the T-loop harness connector from Crutchfield. Perfectly mm -hmm. fine. Since you've already bought that, it'll work. The problem you're going to run into is door chime. So if, if you don't want to deal with the door chime, send the loop back and order the Metra piece for that. So they make a Metra DSP Lite version for the Silverado 2021, which will take care of your door chime. That's literally its feature. We have a video up talking about GM door chime went up about three weeks ago and we talk about the piece in that video it comes with the dsp light which means it's got like a 12 or 13 band eq built into it so you can do some tuning after the fact if you don't want to do that then you can take your t loop you're going to need a dsp so that you can create a notch filter onto the door chime because the door chime is going to go bang 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 and it's going to make you wet your pants every time you get in the vehicle it really sucks but the the real fix for this is to pick up the metra uh, so head over to MetroOnline.com, type in the make and model of your car, and order that piece, um, and send back the little $25 harness you got for this, because that, that would be the better way to do it, to add amplifiers to it. It'll give you a six-channel preamp out, everything would be great. Hey, Dean, Fernando, quick question. Could you explain Kenwood's three-way mode, and when's the best time to use it? Sure, I'd love to. Now, the three-way mode is no longer just for Kenwood, all right? So certain model pioneers will do it, Kenwood will do it on certain models, JVC will do it on certain models, Sony will do it on the ES stuff, and Alpine is also capable of doing it, I think, on a couple of their models. Uh, the idea behind it is if you were gonna do a basic front stage upgrade with subwoofer, instead of having to go out and buy all this extra stuff, you could use the existing amplifier that's in the radio to power uh, a tweeter on two of the channels that'll actively be crossed over from the radio. The mid-range on the other two channels, which has a bandpass crossover, meaning you can set a top and a bottom, so it'll only play up so high, it'll only play down so low. And then use the RCA output sub portion to go off to a small sub amp and control a subwoofer. In doing this, you lose the rear outputs, okay? Because the rear outputs are going to power, depending on the make, either the front speaker or either the tweeters or the mid-range. Uh, that varies depending on the manufacturer. So some manufacturers, uh, channels one and two are the mid-range, channel three and four is the tweeter, and vice versa on a couple of the other manufacturers. So make sure you read the instructions when you're getting ready to do this. If you want rear speakers, this is not the way to go about it, meaning it's no bueno. It's, it's no good. Eh. Now, the only manufacturer that has that capability to do tweeter, mid, rear, sub is the new Stinger radio the what is it called uh the horizon horizon thank you it hasn't stuck in my head yet new horizon has eight channel preamp output 
So that allows you to do those kind of things with that style. Now, the cool thing is, is that if you wanted to then go off to, you can use the radio power to power the speakers. So it makes it really convenient to do, let's say, a front stage, like a basic front stage upgrade, 200 watt or 300 watt on maybe a 10 or a 12. You get a really nice small system in a car, okay? But if you want to go bigger, the RCAs also translate out to this. So it gives you DSP style control, uh, meaning you can pick the crossover frequencies. You don't have to turn a dial or do some strange stuff like that. The other thing too is that you can. Yeah, I can. You can. Yeah, I think you can. To, we're, we're okay. Mm -hmm. We still got another like five minutes. Um, you can use the preamp section output to go off to an amplifier. It will give you time alignment for each one of those channels. So you can align the tweeter, you can align the mid-range, you can do cross, like said crossovers, and it has equalization now for tweeter and mid-range. And depending, like a Sony ES will give you for every speaker individually. It's pretty cool. But that's really the, the thing. This is something that a lot of people don't use because a lot of people like rear. And if, if that's, that's the caveat. Like, this doesn't work with rear. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, yeah, you're good to go. Hey, Dean and Fernando, when did car audio installation get so expensive? Had a full system put in my Kia in, in 2019 for less than 400 bucks. Just got a quote today and lowest was 600, just the labor. So here's the thing. The cost of doing everything has gotten exponentially more, as we all know when we go to the grocery store. That translates out to, in 2019 to 2024, the rent in this building has gone up five times, okay? And that doesn't mean like a hundred bucks. It's gone up five times since 2019. You sign a one year lease with these guys, all right? It also means that power, turning on these lights, even though we have, we switched to LED and we found the most efficient way possible to put light on this thing, electricity has gone up substantial. As we all know, when we paid power bill in 2019 compared to what we pay now, it's like, holy shit guys, we're, what, what? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have all just those two basic things alone will cause the increase. Take that in consideration with some <laughs> like when it comes to like accessories, buck connectors, screws and stuff like that, things that don't get put into a line item. All of that has gone up exponentially, meaning when I used to buy a bag of buck connectors for five dollars, they're fifteen dollars now, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. So I have to roll that into there. Now, a power wire kit aside, which you mentioned that wasn't part of it, so we won't have to get into the price of copper. But the other thing, too, is the cost of living has gone up. Now, keep in mind, I haven't gotten a raise in 10 years. That's, and you probably haven't either. Okay. So, but a lot of places will give you a cost of living increase. So, between 2019 and 2024, a lot of companies will pay their guys another five, 10 cents an hour. To, so, there's five years of increase in, in like all of it. So, all of this adds up. Now, I can tell you for us, that $400 system probably would be a thousand bucks now. Oh, 100%. Because like, these cars are getting easy, any easier to work on, and everybody wants, you know, the bougie installs. Like and, and $600 like for a full system, yeah, I think that's, it's that's, like, that's it's a, a hell, deal. That's a hell of a deal. So yes. the other thing, too, is when you look at what other people in the same field are charging. So right. if you go to Ford, which would be like a Kia, or you call Kia and say, hey, what do you charge for non warrantied service hour? You know, and it's going to be somewhere between, let's say, $125 and $225 an hour, mm -hmm. okay, which is crazy. But that's what an hour worth of a technician's time cost. So it's no different for us. And the reason why theirs cost that much is for the same reason I've just explained. So regardless of who you voted for or whatever, I mean, there's been several presidents since I was a kid. And back when I was in high school, I could buy gas for $0.72 cents a gallon. That would be amazing now. And if I'm lucky, it might be 272, but it could be 472. So the stuff just goes up and up and up and up and up. And we make less and less and less and less. So that's yes. the economics class for today, people. <laughs> um, is it time? Yes, sir. All right. This segment is brought to you by the five folks at. Uh, you got to shut that off. Oh, that's yeah. your job. My bad. What the heck, like, man? You have one I... roll. You totally screwed up my thing. <laughs> like, this is brought. Oh, bro. See, it's all it's all just gone bad. Yes. And the show went dead. Why? I don't know. Okay. There you go. We're live. Okay, hold on. <laughs> We're gonna do this. 
There you go. Okay. Good job, Fernando. It's all your fault. Anyway, this portion of the show is brought to you by the five folks at Arc Audio. If you're interested in checking out some of the most amazing little compact motorcycles, side-by-side, crate, or small applications in your car, you can check out the Moto line of products. You have the Moto 720 4 channel amplifier. This thing is a beast. Uh, we've done a dyno on it. It's very expensive. But if you're one of those guys that just likes the ultimate and loud speakers, and you're like, man, I want this stuff to rip shit up, make sure to head over to their website and check out their line of speakers. Look at that guy just smiling because he's got some moto. They make three different versions of the speaker. And if you are a Harley guy, they have packages as well as grills to finish off your installation. Check them out at arcaudio.com. Any button. Hit them all. <laughs> just hit every button. Uh, brought to you by the Blackout. Yes. Yeah, I, know, I like right? it. So the Blackbird is the Blackout. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, those guys. Very fun. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, and, Cal, and, so, and there you go. Yeah, and Cali wanted $15 an hour minimum wage is just going to make things worse. The, there, there again, I, yeah, I, I don't... Yeah, it's Cali here, too. Yeah, it's here, too. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't claim to be... Like, I, I stay away from all of this stuff in, in, the, in, the, in the etherverse because it's, it's really... It, it doesn't help anybody. Um, but the... Hey, what's up, Mr. Bennett? Hi, Chris. Uh, made, it made it home. Fantastic. Thank That's you for awesome. coming on the show. We had a great time. But the reality is, is you can't, you can't pay somebody more without having to raise prices. That's, that's just the reality. It's like it, it, money doesn't come from nowhere. And, and I think that's the fallacy of this whole thing. It's like if, if you got a guy that is selling $2 things and $3 things and $5 things and you want to pay them, you know, a living wage of $20 an hour, well, those things can no longer be that price because one of two things has to happen. A, we either have to sell more to offset the price increase or B, we have to raise the price. Now, selling more sounds like a great idea, but the reality of it is you still have a market that is only going to spend so much money on your product. So if you've got 20 customers, you're probably going to continue to have 20 customers. Now, you could try to get 30 customers, which would allow you to give them a raise without raising the price, but the reality is it's not going to happen. Yes, it is twenty dollars. I'm going um, to California. I know. Well, the cost of living in California though is through the roof. So even twenty dollars an hour is like getting paid ten. I'm just going to go and sleep but in the shop. That, that is price. that is the problem. Is is that when you when you have somebody that is making that money, they don't really understand e- economics and how the system works. They just see that they're going to pay twenty dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. So now I'm paying you twenty dollars an hour, but that extra five bucks you're getting. That has to come from somewhere. So everywhere across the board, they're going to raise the price of the products to offset. So you're not getting a $5 raise. Sure, you are, but you're going to spend that $5 just trying to buy the same shit you were buying before. Yeah. Or you're going to end up with $80 worth of pizza and cause Brian to have a heart attack. I paid for it, but still. He was like, bro, how much money did you spend on pizza? I thought everyone would want chicken wings. But that was $30 more than what we ordered here. It was thirty dollars more than we ordered. Because we ordered yeah, here, and it's like fifty, here is 50 bucks. bucks. Yeah. So pizza in California. And we have is more bucks. over there. Wait, what do you mean we have more? We have more pizza. We have uh, two pizzas. There's plus two pizzas the soda. plus the soda and the wings. And the wings. We introduced Brian to uh, Fanta pineapple. Fanta pineapple. It was yeah. so amazing. Yeah. Oh, dude, don't even get me started. Air fares are up twenty five percent. Airline service is down. Spent Friday night sleeping on the floor in S. LC right. never had to do that in 25 years and they would not give me a travel voucher for a room. Why would they? All right, so let's talk about how how, how expensive it is like now. Let's not. It's really <laughs> depressing. Let's get back to car audio questions. Thank you. Uh is this even is this thing even working? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, it's what it is, guys. Uh here you go. Uh what amp of speakers would you recommend from Hertz Audio? Hertz. Hertz. Just pick one. <laughs> so they have the Millies. They have the Millie Pros and the Millie Legends are kind of like the go-to de facto um, high-end version. Mm-hmm. The Millie Pros, to me, are probably the best value out of their product. The Cento Pros are really nice, and that's kind of the go-to if I'm trying to, like... Cento, Cento, whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's the one that starts with a C, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably your best value in a speaker mm-hmm. um, as far as, like, price, performance, reason that reasonable... But the Millie Pros, to me, are like, that's where the the line really shines the most. Like, those speakers are like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as amplifiers go, I'm not real familiar with their amplifiers anymore. You know, we've kind of grabbed, kind of moved away from there and and concentrate more on the Audison line of things, um, just because... 
they don't have a lot of DSP amplifiers and we don't do too many non DSP amplifiers. They do make one. They I do. own, I own a set. I own the H, uh, H8 DSP. Which but is that's, a standalone, DSP. that's DSP. a standalone DSP. Yeah. So, um, and I know they make a, like a, I know they make a DSP amplifier, which do. is kind of like an Audison light. Yeah. Um, but for, for amplifiers, I typically go with the Audison stuff. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not uncommon to do Audison amplifiers with Hertz speakers, because yeah. in my opinion, the Hertz make better speakers uh, performance wise and in, in what our clients are looking for than Audison. Even Fote- Hertz make the, uh, the SPL shows, you know, you have a motorcycle, yeah. you have things like that. So, yeah. Uh, but yes, I agree. No more talk about that. On the car stereo set. Perfect, yes. That's I agree, Mike. That's, that's why I said I don't like to talk about any of that stuff. Thank it, you, Chris. It just hurts my head. Chris Vera says, sub, amp, four channel, and speakers are more than 600 even at Best Buy. I oh, would my be God, Chris. Paying 600 for... <laughs> <sighs> yeah, and that's Best Buy guys. I mean, those guys are like, oh. hey, and if you're interested in seeing Chris Vera, if you'd like to meet him, he's going to be at Alabama with us. That's right. We're going to be yeah. headed out to Alabama for World Finals. What, what, wascally wabbit? Ha, ha, ha. What? Um, what are you on. talking about? I know. Let me just do this right here. So if, yeah, I if you're going to be, if you live anywhere near Alabama, if it's been driving distance, because the price of flights are ridiculous. Birmingham. Uh, Birmingham, Alabama, October 12th and the 13th. We will be there on the 12th, which is a Saturday. And we'll be hanging out there with our good friend, Chris Beer, Brian Mitchell, and a ton of other people. Supposedly High Fi is going to show up. Uh, Mr. Hi-Fi Vega. So, Dude, it's free to enter. It's free to enter, and it costs a lot to get there. <laughs> Nobody's there. The hotels that. suck, too. But, hey, you should definitely check it out. I can't wait. I, this is one of the – I'm super – we've never done this before. We've yeah. gone to local shows and hung out and whatnot. We've never done a big nah, show like this. Nah, nah yeah. Uh, Jeff Smith will be there, of course. There and, you go. Um, We're going to hang out with Jeff. And uh, – um, Yeah. Yeah. Said it. I'm trying. I'm Come trying. On, man. I'm trying. Okay. Uh, Hall. There. What's Hall? Halds. What's his first name? Jeffrey. Jeffrey Hall will be there from MCI. Okay. And uh, Mr. Tuner Extraordinaire, who just uh, spent his time at Eldridge's training camp. Okay. So, uh, who Chris Vera is super excited to, to finally face to face. Okay. They may kiss. I'm just saying. I don't know. Um, hey, fellas. Just wrapped up running the tune on my Kia upgrade Rockford speakers. Key lock. Key 200.4. Thank you guys for insight, knowledge. Front stage upgrade with rear fill on factory sound stage is amazing. There you go. I'm just uh, awesome. it's fantastic that it all worked out, and you're welcome. Uh, when is the Audison Forza bit follow up show coming up? Funny you should ask. We we're just talking about it today. I need Ken is in town. He's back. I need to get in touch with him. I need to coordinate getting the car and Ken in the same physical area at the same time. So. It probably won't be this week. I'm going to shoot for next week um, because that would make that would actually work out well for us. So maybe next week. Maybe. Maybe you I'm going to shoot so? for. I, I've got a solid maybe here. Wow. Um, okay, hold on. Oh, that's a lot. I'm a new Morel dealer in Dallas, Texas market. Okay. What's your thoughts on the line? <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm I myself am the biggest Morel fanboy ever. All right, I've been running them my whole life. So when it comes to the line, it's fantastic. They can do no wrong in my eyes. However, with that being said, there is a variety of Morel speakers to choose from. One of the things I like about Morel is we have, uh, it, it is a full product line. And they also make some really nice amplifiers too at reasonable price points. Uh, they make the five channel AB for one through four and class D sub, which is a really nice five channel if you're looking for just a uh, basic five channel amplifier. Um, it's a little big because it has an ABD. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as the speaker line goes, between the Maximo uh, HEs up to Ultras, um, Virtus Carbon Nanos are definitely the most popular. The bread and butter of the line would definitely be the hybrids um, because that, that gives you that high-end, nice speaker, a little bit less than you know the, the crazy money. Um, but no, it, they, they cover all their bases. They sound amazing. I think you're going to love them. Yeah, no, Definitely going to love sure. them. So, okay, what do you got? I got a lot. Okay, we'll hit it. Let's let's go through them as fast as we can. Okay, we'll do we'll do a, we'll do a speed run because we got a couple minutes left in the show here. Um, hold on, let me. I think it's time to switch this. All right, DMH. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this portion of the show is brought to you by the fine folks at Auto Control. 
Uh, as soon as I get done with this question, I'll show you why. All right, DMH 2660 NEX PDX V9 RS 65C twos front RS 68s in the rears in the pair of old school MTX T6 108 wire a four ohm under the seat seal box. I want to add an epicenter or a DSP, or should I add both? So if the if you listen to classic rock and roll and you're like, I really wish there was more impact in the music, the epicenter will give you that. The DSP, if you're like, I really wish I could just make everything sound better in general, the DSP will give you that. If you're like, I really want crazy bass and to make everything sound better in general, I would recommend both. The reality is you're going to end up with both, so just plan on owning both. Because as, as men, we all know that if we want something and it's teasing us in the back of the head, we're just going to do it at some point anyways. Next question. All right, go all for right. it. So you got to delete that one. Let me go back to this. Okay. Um, two. Hey, guys, did you know that Audio Control just came out with prefab boxes for trucks? That's right. GM as well as Ford F-150s to pair up with their Jeep boxes. So now you get a Gladiator, a Gladiator box with two eights, an F-150 box with two tens, as well as both of the GMC uh, Chevy boxes, depending on the year. Uh, check them out. Head over to AudioControl.com. Those both come with tens. They are custom built boxes specifically for those vehicles. It's pretty cool. I'm Spike, excited. Spikes for woofers, right? Definitely. Okay. Yes. Next All question. Right. Uh, can you have a DSP amp, audio control D61200, and an LC51300 hook up together for a nine channel 2023 Chevy Tahoe with Bose? No. Yes. No. The problem is, is that the D61200 only has two outputs, whereas the LC51300 has five inputs so if you only wanted the dsp two of the channels in the 5 1300 and or you're going to bridge them then yeah you could do it uh and you could go like high level on the subwoofer or something like that but my guess is you probably want the dsp on the subwoofer because the subwoofer is going to need the most correction because it's a bow stereo so really no that combination would never be anything i would do you could do a d61200 and a d51300 and have both dsps running at the same time using two laptops to set them up. It's a little bit more confusing. You may want to look into something like a Helix amplifier where you have multiple channels at the same time that you could use, such as a 12-channel amplifier or something like that. Those will offer that and be more reasonably priced than something like that. So you can do like a 12 to uh, 10 to 12. Uh, Audison also offers products in the same category that you can bridge. So if you want to do multiple channels. But I would look at Audison or Hertz or Helix, sorry, Audison or Helix. Otherwise, you're going to need the D51300 as well. Uh, okay. Come on, Next this is one. speed uh, round. I'm, I'm... We're waiting on you. Come on, man. Get it. Boom. Okay. I uh, have a 2020 Silverado hooked up, two amps using the pack harness and a LOC. Now, turn signal, come through speakers. The turn signals. Yeah, yeah. Any, Any suggestions? suggestions? Yeah, get rid of what you used. Head over to uh, MetroOnline.com and pick up their DSP Lite version of the T-Harness. It'll control the turn signals as well as the door chime. Bring them down to a manageable level that you can do through the app that they offer. Uh, strongly recommend using Android to tune it. If you'd like to know more of what I'm talking about, we did a video on this like two or three weeks ago um, showing you it in action. But, yes, you totally want to get one of those. Works great. It's fantastic. Pick one up. Next question. I have a Pioneer head unit, and the mic it comes with blows. What other mic do y'all recommend? None. The, it's the made, one that comes the ones with, that come with it. You may have a bad version of it, which is totally you possible. Pinch it when you're yes. running the wire. Sometimes the when other, you put in the things back. Yep, or location. Uh, location. There's a couple different locations for mic, depending on what you're doing. One would be up by the mirror. Two would be over on the A pillar up by the head. A pillar. A pillar up by where the windshield and the headrest uh, he, over uh, headliner meet. This area up here. Three would be attached to the top of the steering wheel, aimed right at your face. Those are the three positions that you can try putting it. I would recommend just pulling it and moving now, it around to see. Now, what works sometimes the best. Pioneer has an uh, updates uh, some yes problem or, firmware yeah. updates that can fix the Bluetooth microphone. Performance. Uh, you issues. can also go so in to that. adjust the microphone. Usually, when you're making a call, sometimes when you're not. Next question. Okay. Oh, let me do this. Okay. It is possible to use a factory USB hub with a factory stereo. Also recommend for a 2000 
16 sticks. Yeah, so I think like okay. aftermarket. So if we're trying to do an aftermarket radio, USB hubs do not work. There's only one radio that take a USB hub, which is a high 10 from Stinger, which does look fantastic in that video or in that you know, 2016. Looks really nice. They do make a custom dash kit to fit, fit that. So if you are looking to do that, the only radio to do that is a high 10. Everything else, you'll have to remove the hub because they only have the ability to control line in. That's it. So it's not a PC, whereas the high 10 is. 2025 Mazda CX-70 Premium Plus H or P8. Yeah, okay. It has 12-speaker Bose system. What are my options for audio upgrade? What would you do? The question you're going to have to ask yourself is what do you want to do? Meaning, do you want to just do a front stage upgrade? Do you want to add a subwoofer? Do you want to do a front stage upgrade with subwoofer? The thing to keep in mind is right now, nobody makes anything for that car at all. So you're going to have to do what we call speaker for speaker. Meaning, if you want to do a front stage upgrade, if it's got a three-way set up front, which I believe it has like that six and a half up in the kick panel, it's a pain in the ass to get to. But if you want to replace all that, you have to pick those channels. If it has a center channel in it, you do have to count that because you always have to integrate the center channel to the system. And more than likely, if it's Bose, it's going to be up mixed, but you can't remove it. So the other thing, too, is you're not going to be summing anything together unless you are super badass tuner guy. And even still, I wouldn't do it. Uh, so if it has, let's say five channels or six channels of audio up front, you're going to want to do five or six channels of audio up there. So be looking at like an eight channel, eight to 12 DSP. Um, you also have to keep in mind how many inputs you have. So if it has 12 channels of input that you actually need to get to really, the only thing that does that is Helix right out of the box. Audison, you can get an extension. You can plug in and add four more inputs to get 12 channel, but speaker for speaker is what you're going to be want to be doing. Anyone know of radio upgrades for a 2020 Silverado non-Bo system? Uh, you know, it's funny. I just saw where RVDFL. RVDFL. Yeah. If you check RVDFL, he just so came over, out with something. If you head over to C Outlook where we do the news, there's an article that came out, I believe, today or yesterday where Rich from RVDFL was talking about the upgraded radio that he has for his vehicle. Uh, for that vehicle, I don't know what the criteria is. I just got the post. Yeah, really, yeah, I haven't gone to it, but check it um, out. Yeah, this is a weird one because no, there is like Metro doesn't really make anything for this, and they're the only people to do. So it's very odd. It's a very odd one that I don't know why it hasn't. But the only other place is MetroOnline.com to see what they have available for that. I don't know if anything. Uh, Dean, if you were on a budget, what DSP with at least eight channel out would you pick? A DSR one. DSR1 is a 4 to 8 DSP that is extremely reasonable. Uh, it uses one of the, now keep in mind, I'm an Apple guy, so I only use the iPad to tune it. It is the only DSP that I will tune with something other than a laptop because the app is so good on an iDevice. Sucks on Android for sure, so I don't recommend it if you're not going to be doing that. What is the, um, the power base? Is 6? The power six? base is an 8 to uh, 8. To eight. So PowerBase also makes a new one, too, that is uh, phone-based for both iPhone yeah. and Android that is also extremely reasonably priced. Yeah. What is it? It's 8 to 8. Yeah. No, you can have it at PowerBase.com to check that out. It is an 8 to 8. Um, thanks for always answering my question. If you were updating a Bose system in a 2004 GMC Sierra, what would you go with? I have fifteen to two thousand dollars budget. The first thing I'd be doing is replacing the radio with a new radio. Hundred percent. So I would get a new radio. I would do what we call the the, ba the basic upgrade. That I'm doing a new radio, um, possibly replacing the speakers, at least the front speakers, and then adding some kind of a subwoofer. It's a Tahoe I, or it's yeah, it's, yeah Sierra. It's, it's Sierra. I would look at like the Rockford P three hundred enclosures. Mm -hmm. Those are the amplified. They make a ten that slides up underneath that seat. They also make an eight. I would probably use something like that. So new radio, dash kit harness, all that stuff. Uh, P300, uh, Rockford self-amplified subwoofer, so I can cut the cost on having amp and sub. They sound fantastic. And probably replace the front two speakers, front four speakers. Yeah. Yep. And if you're going to do it yourself, then you can probably get a little, a little fire. Hey, Dean and Fernando from Columbus, Ohio. What's up? Hola, amigos. Hola, Angel. Hope you're having a good day. Um. Terry Dawson, what's up uh, after the show? Uh, and Arc Audio, you can daisy chain up to four DSPs for up to 32 channels of output. Yeah. Yes, and uh, you can toggle between them in the software on the bottom right-hand corner. We haven't talked about that yet. 
for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on. Oh, shoot. Uh, I have a Dodge Charger with an Alpine system. I got the RP, the PAC AP4 CH41 and the corresponding cable to interface in the amplifier, the APH CH01. Can huh. I cut and correct my front door speaker wires to Oh wait, can I can I cut and connect my front door speaker wires to the rear to the speaker rear speaker wire. wires so they won't play mid bass? No. Okay, so the reality is, is yes, because the ohm load is the same on front to rear. The product that you have, the AP4 CH41, uh, makes you keep the factory amplifier in the equation. So you, you can't remove it. Mm -hmm. The CHA1 allows you to modify, loop together, or do whatever you want with the output channels. So if you wanted to keep channels in, you can you can do whatever you want with those channels. So you can do whatever you want. Now the ohm load is the same, so technically that would be your only concern. So I, I don't know why you want to do that, but if you want to do it, yes, the answer is you can. <laughs> it's because uh, it is because you don't have four arc audio DSPs. No, I have I actually have three arc audio DSPs. Thank you very much. If I wanted four, I could make a call. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, have you? But there, like I said, there's a reason for it. Ha ever have issues with turn on pop in a DSR one? Tech support was no help running standalone mode. Yeah, we had it all the time in a Chevy. So when we when the Chevy Amp Pro came out. We would go Chevy Amp Pro, DSR1, because they didn't make an AR solution for Chevy, still don't, uh, and then off to the amplifiers. And what you'd end up with is a sequencing issue, meaning the when the two units would turn on too fast and there is no delay. Metro makes a thing called the... P.O. something? Called the AXPS. It's called an AXPS, and, it, and we did a video on it, so you can check it out. Just type in Metro AXPS. This little guy right here, and it is a delay, turn on and off delay guy. This is what you want so that you can adjust the delay, because Rockford didn't put that into that piece. When Arc Audio came out with their, their version of the um, PSM Pro, they added delay, so you can fix those things. But pick up this piece here. You can play with that and adjust your on and off delays. That should take care of your pop. Because that's what it's coming from. It's just everything is turning on at once, and it just ah, doesn't know how to deal with it. Um, hey, guys, should I hook up my kicker key to 100.4 to my 2007 Honda Odyssey with an aftermarket radio? Sure, why not? It'll do the tune for you, so you don't, you know, it'll give you a nice baseline tune so that you can then, if you want, use your factory radio or your aftermarket radio to, to adjust it and make it a little better, and or don't. Just let it run its own thing and just with the way it sounds. Uh, it'll add delay. It'll add all those fun things. Now, the reality is, is you can do, if you have a higher-end radio, you can do all the things that the kicker key is doing manually, but if you have no idea what the hell that all means, let the key do it and be happy with it. Ah, okay. Uh, hey, last question. Hey, I have a 2014 Audi S5 with the BO system. I currently have an LC 1.800 with the Alpine R210s. How would you recommend setting up the rest of the car? Two tweeters and two woofers indoors, three inch mid range. So I would see if they make any form of interface for this car, which I think I think somebody does. Um, this is the page here. Uh, take a screenshot of this. You're going to want to go to all of these pages and type in your make, model, and year and see if somebody makes an interface for that. Mobridge might. Um, but one of these guys may make an interface. I'm thinking either NavTV, Mobridge will, will make that. Um, but, yeah, that is, that is what I do. Once I did that, it will give me the preamps I need in order to move on. Now, if no one makes an interface for that, you're going to do what we talked about earlier, where we're talking about channel for channel. So you're going to want to get a DSP that's big enough to handle all of your inputs and then redirect all of your outputs, which isn't, it's actually pretty good. It's not a match. Match has something available That's BMW. For... I don't know if they make one for Audi. You can also check Helix or Audison um, because they're European companies. They tend to make adapters for these things, but usually it's one of those manufacturers making it for them. So you can check that out. 
There you go. Dude, what? <laughs> Why do you make the twisted speaker wires? Why not standard speaker wires? Uh, twisted speaker wire. The, the thing is, we're running so many speaker wires. The twisting pair one looks nice. Two, it will help to reject any noise that could be picked up through those said speaker wires. One is really the reason it looks really good, but noise rejection is also a very popular thing to do. Keep in mind, not the most important thing because it is the output. Most of the time, you don't pick up that kind of noise on output. You pick it up on input. Mm -hmm. um, so, on the output side, it's merely it's a lot of it's cosmetics. Uh, and also uh, to make the wiring nice and tidy, um, where you're at, you can do it. And then if you, you know, cause if you think about speed wire, it's just straight runs the wire through the hose. So yeah, a lot of it's just, it looks nice, you know? So, okay guys. Hey, that is the show. That was the speed round. Oh yeah. We knocked out as many as we could. I'd like to thank our sponsors. Last sponsor was audio control. Head over to audiocontrol.com. Check out the new subwoofers, arc audio. If you, if you want the loudest in audio and the smallest in size, check out the Moto line of products for just world-class performance and just, oh, my God, make my ears bleed. They make more than just badass DSP, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, thinkwarestore.com if you're looking to have cool dash cams to do all kinds of fun stuff. Thinkwarestore.com as well as focal-america.com if you're looking for the premium speakers and a what we call focal inside aka plug and play for your vehicle to make your installation quick fast and easy check them out at focal-america.com as well as Moscone Gladen for the most amazing amplifiers ever, ever thank you guys thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight we'll be back on Friday morning for the news as well as next Saturday if we can get your question you can always find us on Instagram <clears throat> where we'll answer your questions during the week and also update you what's happening in <clears throat> there you go talking too much in the bay you guys have a great night see you later bye <laughs>